My name is Marianne Redding, and I'm the curator here at the Sioux City Art Center. Thank you for joining us for another discussion of the phot photographs that are in Magnetic West. This photograph was taken in 1937. It's by Dorothea Lang. Dorothea Lang was one of the FSA photographers, and FSA stands for Farm Security Administration. The photographers documented life in America between 1935 and 1944. These photographs are so important that the negatives of all the photo photographers who worked for the FSA are preserved at the Library of Congress. So anyone who is interested in these photographs and that time period can research those online. Every single one of them is there, and there are thousands of them. The Farm Security Administration was a progressive New Deal agency founded to alleviate poverty. The photographs of the FSA Administration, Office of War, of War Information Photograph Collection, form an extensive pictorial record of Depression-era American life. The project initially documented cash loans made to individual farmers by the Resettlement Administration and the, and the construction of planned suburban communities. The second stage focused on the lives of sharecroppers in the South and migratory agricultural workers in the Midwestern and Western states. As the scope of the project expanded, the photographers turned to recording both rural and urban conditions throughout the United States, as well as mobilization efforts for, the wor for World War II. Staff photographers were given specific assignments and subjects and geographical areas to cover. The field assignments often lasted several months. Before beginning their assignments, photographers read a lot of reports from government reports, local news, newspapers, books, any kind of material that they could get their hands on that would give them insight to the people and the places that they were going to visit. The FSA photographers were encouraged to record anything that might shed additional light on the topic, topic that they were photographing, and they received special training in making personal contacts and interviewing people. So in the 1930s, Hundreds of thousands of poverty-stricken Dust Bowl refugees poured into California from the parts Midwest. And so this is documenting that with somewhat of a gentle humor. The people who were displaced were searching for food, jobs, and dignity. Meanwhile, much of the country was mired in its own depression-fueled misery. With, and they were oblivious to the ecological and social catastrophe that was happening across the country. Armed with a camera and a good dose of outrage and compassion, Dorothea Lang set out to change that. She was a skilled portraitist, and she possessed an ability to return a sense of dignity to a group of people that had been routinely dehumanized. She also had come of age during the modernist tr transformation of photography into an art form and turned her lens on America's social ills with an aesthetic, aesthetically gripping style of an artist. One of the things that's really interesting about Dorothea Lang is that she studied photography at Columbia University in New York City with Clarence H. White, who was a member of the photo secessionist group. So in 1918, she decided to travel around the world, which was very unusual for a woman in 1918 to decide to do that. So she thought what she would do is earn money by selling her photographs while she was traveling. She left New York and she got as far as San Francisco before she ran out of money. So she settled in San Francisco and got a job at a photography studio there. That was before she was hired by the FSA. And while she was working for the studio, she photographed a lot of the unemployed people who wandered the streets of San Francisco. Mostly it was men who were out looking for food to feed themselves and their families. When she was hired by the FSA, Dorothea Lang often lived with the families that she wanted to photograph. I mean, she was very empathetic. She frequently included their words along with her photographs. And because she knew the people so intimately, she was committed to sharing both the images and words with a larger public.